These shocking events of the Israel-Hamas war have translated into both protests and vigils in the UK. A pro-Palestine demonstration took place near the Israeli embassy last night, while a Jewish community vigil for Israel was also held in Westminster. Jewish schools in the capital have even stepped up security. I mean, depressingly, they've even told students that they can refrain from wearing their blazers in public so as not to advertise their faith. I mean, when did we become this kind of country, you know? Joining me now is the director of Maidenhead Synagogue, it's Rabbi Jonathan Romain, and journalist and contributor to the Jewish Chronicle, it's Sandy Rushdie. Both of you, thank you very, very much. Great to have you both on the show, of course, albeit for absolutely devastating reasons. Uh, Sandy, some shocking news coming out of Israel at the moment, literally right now. We understand that I mean, there's some, some horrific footage of what appears to be people having been burned alive and absolutely just sickening things taking place at, at the moment. I'm going to ask you to comment on what's going on closer to home, though. How do you feel at this idea that we clearly have, clearly have, a cohort of people in Britain who want Israel and, dare I say, Jews, wiped off the face of the earth? It doesn't make me feel good, um, but I do think it's true. So I think British Jews have, in a large part, a wonderful life here. We have Jewish schools, we have kosher restaurants, we have kosher butchers, we have synagogues that we can freely go to. The systems, the institutions, the charities, they're all in place there for us to have a wonderful life in Britain. And as I said, in a large part, we do. However, and it's a big however, whenever there is tension in the Middle East, especially in Israel, but not always, but especially in Israel, it does seem to have a disproportionate impact on Britain's Jewish community. So, for example, we can freely stroll to a kosher restaurant, but it's highly likely that there'll be a convoy of cars driving past shouting Allahu Akbar. You know, for what reason? For what reason? I was taking my kids to the park in Golders Green the other day, the day after the attack, we're reeling, we're speaking to relatives in Israel. The kids are running to the swings, and that's what we hear cars driving past, honking, waving, waving Palestinian flags. Religious Jewish boys are not wearing the kippah. Sorry. Yeah, and I think, I think, and I, and I do think as well the reluctance by certain uh, media outlets to say what is happening in Israel is it's a terrorist attack by a terrorist organization I think speaks volumes but I'm going to go to you now Rabbi Jonathan Romain um, yeah again you know should it be a hate crime do you think should it, it should Europe as a whole be worried that we have imported a lot of people who clearly hold anti-semitic views well um, let's leave aside the people but certainly the anti-semitic views are, are, are very bad indeed and there is this unfortunate uh, correlation between Israel and Jews. There's a lot of Jews who have a connection with Israel, but it doesn't mean to say they're responsible for Israel. And time and time again, you will get people who are perhaps against Israel or against Israeli policies, who then sort of identify British Jews as being you know, responsible. You know, I'm often asked, you know, why are you sending missiles into Gaza? Like me, personally, you know, as if I'm a general in the Israeli army. So yes, I care about the land of Israel, the people of Israel, uh, whether I agree with the government of Israel is a totally different matter. Um, so there's this um, overlay, but the connection, a false, a false responsibility of seeing British Jews as responsible for Israel. And that unfortunately can then tip over from a political argument into a religious hatred. You, you know, there, there's a legitimate criticism of Israel, as is uh, ever, every country, including our own. But when that then tips into hating someone who is Jewish just because they were Jewish, uh, yeah. then, then you have to ask, well, is this actually anti-Semitism being disguised as anti-Zionism? And that's why there was such a try three years ago during the Corbyn years, uh, when there was this worry that what was, you know, until then fairly limited uh, anti-Semitism yeah. uh, was seen to be moving centre stage. And I was so pleased that, that he's gone and Labour seems to have turned the corner. So, so, Sandy, uh, Sandy, I'll bring you back in now. Is, is there a valid criticism of Israel, do you think? And where is that line? Where is that line, I suppose, between supporting Palestinians and being anti-Semitic? I, I, it, well, in answer to your question, something I have a lot of respect for spoken about. I don't think that every sentence um, that comes to anti-Semitism should be 
oh, I know we don't agree with all the actions of the Israeli government, but please don't kidnap and justify the rape of our... You know, it shouldn't have to be a precursor to every defence when it comes to Jew hate. It shouldn't have to be, I'm, in the, I'm a British Jew, I've I'm, I'm got nothing to do with Israel. Like, there always has to be the defence before there's anything else. And actually, you also mentioned people that, um, I suppose you're talking about immigrants, you said people that are brought to the UK. I actually think the issue has got a lot to do with people who are born and bred in the UK. If you walk down the Edgware Road on the night that it was all breaking, all the news of um, the Israel attacks, there were fireworks being set, there were fireworks going off in celebration, people were handing out sweets. Um, there was an, an, another, is, um, when there was another Israel Gaza war a few years ago, we went um, into an Arab shop to pick up some things that we um, liked eating, and they also started handing out sweets in celebration. And I can tell you, the people People that were handing them out um, were born and bred in Britain. So, okay. so there is, to my mind, a very significant, clear issue. I don't know if it's education. I don't know what it is. But to say there's not an issue and to have to justify it every time with criticising the Israeli government shouldn't be shouldn't be right. OK, I, I mean, there is an issue. There is an issue we've seen. Um, I think one of the most grabbing pieces of footage that I saw anyway was from a refugee camp or a processing centre uh, on one of the Greek islands that was, they were all in uh, cock a hoop, you know, dancing around, jumping around, screaming all the kind of usual slogans. And I thought, well, you know, these people are going to be coming with their views to a country, potentially our country. And I'm just not sure that's the right thing. Uh, Rabbi Jonathan, I'll throw it back to you. Uh, are Jewish school children currently not safe in Britain? Can I just answer the previous question a bit more strongly and say that uh, it's perfectly legitimate to criticise Israel. The biggest criticism, critics of Israel are in Israel itself. And half of the Knesset parliament, half of the population are opposed to the government of the day, whichever day that is. But there's a very big difference between criticising a policy of Israel and calling for its destruction. And that's the difference. And Hamas and Iran are actually uh, calling for the destruction of Israel. It's not an argument about this border or that border. It's actually saying you do not deserve to exist. So it's on a totally different level. And Sandy's quite right. I mean, what was happening in the streets is quite appalling because uh, these people were actually celebrating savagery. Uh, they were celebrating the fact that women, children were being uh, kidnapped, taken off hostage. And it was very evident from Hamas's own footage uh, their own evidence was that they weren't attacking military personnel, they weren't attacking uh, military depots, they were just going into the streets and gunning people down, or they were going to this music festival and just shooting indiscriminately. That's not war, that's criminal action, that's against Geneva Convention. It's, it's actually a crime against humanity. It's a, it's a term that's easy to band around, but I think we're actually seeing it in the Hamas attack on Israel at the moment. And so anyone who celebrates that and celebrates that brutality and savagery, you really have to question their morality. Uh, it's not politics. It's an entirely different atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, it's Rabbi, some of... Some of... Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I, we're going to have to leave it there. Apo apologies. I, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to just cut across you. I'm afraid. Sorry, because we we are we are out of time. But can I just thank both of you for coming on and just having such a robust discussion about it? Uh, it's great to have uh, your insight as well, uh, and obviously take care as well as the director of Maidenhead Synagogue, Rabbi Jonathan Romain, and journalist and contributor to the Jewish Chronicle, Sandy Rashti.